started, folks. My name is Richard Francis. I'm a downtown businessman helping to support the uh, downtown business improvement district that is the sponsor of tonight's program. I want to thank Casa Lopez in particular and the Central uh, Market for providing all those good for you guys tonight. And yeah, let's let's do a quick round of applause. And this is just a, a dedicated evening to this facility. Um, really, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to have. It's not easy to find a place that can seat so many people, and it's it's a real pleasure to have Casa Lopez uh, provided for us. So uh, we, we have some great candidates. We want to hear from all of them, uh, and I want to be sure that they each have have as much time as we can possibly allocate. With uh, there are five prepared questions. And each of them have been provided to the candidates in advance. We'll start at one end and go through the entire list um, after they've had a chance to introduce themselves. <coughs> the opening statements will be 90 seconds each. Then we'll get to the question and answer periods. And if you can believe it, they each get a whole minute. So, so they need to keep their comments to the point, And you need to listen fast because they'll be going through it pretty fast and they've all got good ideas for what is good for downtown. And then each will have a one minute closing statement. We'll get done by 7.15 and uh, then move on to the, the mayor's portion of the evening's program. Um, let's see, we've got the five questions, we'll work down the table, each candidate will have one minute. So I think we've been through all that. There is a timekeeper. Um, Abel is being our timekeeper tonight, and he's got uh, 15, 30, uh, and end. 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and end. Uh, or in reverse, 30 seconds to finish up, and then 15 seconds. You won't be able to see him because he's holding them up for the candidates to be able to see. And candidates, if you would, try to comply because our time is so short. That is kind of the operative feature of tonight's uh, event, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and get started. I, I have a different list of order because everybody was able to sit where they wanted to, I think. Um, but let's, uh, let's just start at, at, at your end, Mr. Starr. If you would introduce yourself, you've got a 90 second opening statement. Area. My name is Aaron Starr and I ask for your vote to restore the people's voice in city government and to bring a new generation of innovative results-oriented leadership to our city council. Oxnard is facing, a is facing critical challenges to our economy, our safety, and our quality of life. Unfortunately, the people's voice is too often ignored by our leaders in City Hall. When the city council failed to listen to you and voted to increase sewer rates by 87%, I mobilized our community and put Measure M on the November ballot to overturn the city's unfair rate increase. Remember to vote yes to pay less. We deserve better financial management, not higher utility bills, to solve our city's budget problems. As your councilman, I will focus our city's precious resources on essential services that residents need like public safety and street maintenance. I will insist on limiting wasteful spending and turning over money-losing distractions like our performing arts center to private businesses or nonprofits. Let's use the savings to hire more police officers and get our streets and sidewalks fixed. Oxnard is also losing jobs in neighboring communities because our taxes are too high and our city government too bureaucratic. I will support reforms like permit simplicity to make Oxnard a destination for businesses to locate and create jobs. With your support, we can restore the people's voice at City Hall and build a brighter future for Oxnard. I would be honored to earn your vote and serve as your voice on the Oxnard City Council. Thank you, Mr. Starr. Moving next to Ms. Flores Haro. Is that right? Go ahead, please. Check. Oh, okay, good. It's off. Um, hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Genevieve Flores Haro. I grew up in Oxnard. A uh, very proud uh, product of public schools in the Rio School District. I'm a graduate of Oxnard High School, and I have two degrees from the University of Southern California, including a master's degree in public administration. 
For the past couple years, I was working as a staffer for Congresswoman Julia Brownlee's office, where I worked on Social Security, Veterans, State Affairs issues for the Congresswoman. And most recently, I was I'm the Associate Director of the Misteco Indigena Community Organizing Project. It's a nonprofit located here in the heart of downtown, near, or near the heart of downtown Oxnard. And so please know um, this form is very appropriate because those issues are issues that we see um, and are concerned of to our nonprofit as well. Um, a little bit of why you know I'm running for the city uh, council position is I'm very proud to be from Oxnard. I'm very proud of my community, and I want to uh, elevate and, and maintain an excellent standard of excellence for my city. I remember being a cross country runner at Oxnard High School, and just being amazed at being able to run from Oxnard High School through the fields, touch the beach, and then come back. I and mean, I'm very very proud to be from the city, and I hope to earn your vote in November. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Flores Hubbard. Let's move on now to Mr. Madrigal. Mr. Madrigal. Uh, hello, my name is Oscar Madrigal, and I am asking for your support and your vote on November the 8th. I am born and raised here in the city of Oxnard. I am a graduate of Channel Islands High School here in Oxnard, and I have a bachelor's degree in history from California Lutheran University along with a master's degree in public policy and administration. Um, I worked for the Oxford Union High School District for about seven years as a substitute teacher and a history teacher at Pacifica High School. I am currently a Spanish teacher at Oaks Christian School in Westlake. Um, the reason why I'm running for city council is because I want to give back to my community and I want to show the people of Oxnard that you know good things do come out of La Colonia neighborhood. Um, another thing about myself uh, is that I want to focus on our public safety. The city of Oxnard does have a stigma about it, but I think if we come together as a community, we can improve public safety to improve our city. Not only here in the neighborhoods, but also in the downtown and all across the city. Also, I want to improve our public transportation. It is quite ridiculous that some college students take about an hour and a half drive to get to, on a bus to get to Ventura College or even Oxnard College. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. Councilman McDonald. Thank you, Ms. Francis. Uh, Mr. Magani, I'll warn you now, I can't see those things even with glasses on, so just give me a cut sign when I'm at the end and I'll stop. <laughs> Thank you everyone for allowing me to be here and speak to you. I've been a council member for the city for eight years now. Prior to that, I spent 30 years with the Oxnard Police Department. Uh, I was born and raised in Santa Barbara. I've lived in this area since the very early 70s. Uh, in terms of education, I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Cal State Long Beach, master's in public administration from Cal State Northridge, and a Juris Doctor, although I never got around to being an attorney. I, don't, I just have the paperwork. So. Um, I love this city. I love everything about this city, and, and I want to see us prosper and move to the future. I still think we have a lot of work ahead of us, uh, and I'm asking for your vote to help me remain in office and allow me to continue working towards what I believe are, are the goals that this city needs to achieve, to have a safe, wonderful community in which we can live, work, and recreate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. All right, the gentleman just arrived. You want to, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Enrique Petrillo. Uh, well, borrow, borrow Mr. Starr's uh, microphone, if you would. There you go. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, my name is Enrique Petrillo. I'm running for Oxford City Council. I have three priorities and uh, the reasons that I'm running. One, I want to create, uh, I want to increase economic development, create hundreds of good paying jobs for our citizens. Two, I want to reduce the crime rate. Three, I want to reduce utility rates for our citizens. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your first name. All right, so we have, now that chair is taken. All right, I had a request from the cameraman to move you down, but it happened already. <laughs> All right. I think so, I'm in better company, right? Mr. Albanese, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourself. I really apologize. Uh, as you guys know, we, we have severe traffic in the city now, the city of Oxford. My name is David Albanese, and I wanna be your next city councilman for the city. 
I actually grew up for most of my life here in the city of Oxnard. I attended Wainimi High School, Oxnard College, CSUCI, and locally in the city of uh, Ventura, I attended law school as well. So I want to be your next city council member because I feel I'm the only person up here with the most qualifications as far as experience, knowledge, and very, very simple common sense and great intuition, which is what I feel really gives us who we are. Thank you. Mr. Almanis, thank you. Let's move on to Mr. Dozier. Mr. Dozier, you're up. Thank you. My name is Orlando Dozier. Uh, I'm also a candidate for Oxnard City Council. Uh, a little bit about myself, originally from Virginia, uh, moved out to California. Uh, I'm from the military. Uh, from there, I worked for seven years for uh, Lockheed Martin as a cost analyst, program analyst, and so forth. Uh, degree from University of Maryland and uh, various other associate degrees. Uh, the reason why I'm running for Oxnard City Council is because I think that the city is at a crossroads now where a lot of late work, a lot of hard work has gone in, and now we're at a point where we need to execute the plans that we as a community have all agreed upon. Um, a good example would be the traffic that we all had to fight through to get here tonight. And that's because our free, our um, Oxnard Boulevard is still considered a highway. And it's got trucks, and I believe one of those big trucks flipped the tree. So, you know, that, that's just one of the many things that I think we need to focus on. We have a downtown plan. We have um, a 2030 plan. We have so many things that everyone has agreed on. Now we need to execute it and get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. Mr. Huber. Good evening. My name is Steve Huber. Thank you for being here. I'm a <coughs> candidate for city council. I want to tell you a little bit about myself and the three things that I'm very excited about and passionate about are common sense leadership, financial responsibility, and trust in government. I enlisted in the Navy after high school, and I was appointed to the United States Naval Academy, where I graduated and worked my way through the ranks, became a commanding officer of the destroyer, and then was uh, fortunate to have commanding officer of another major command at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Port Miami. After I retired from that command, I immediately went to work in my neighborhood, in Cabrillo neighborhood, as part of the Neighborhood Watch. I've been on the Planning Commission for the last six years, where I'm the chair of the Planning Commission today. Since being on the Planning Commission, I've gotten to see all of the things that go on in the city, what happens behind the scenes and how things are done. I'm getting very frustrated and disappointed I can't sit on the sidelines. We have a crisis on our hands. We have a weak budget, we have crumbling infrastructure, we have no programs for children or seniors, and we need to take care of that. I have experience, skills, and abilities to take care of that, and I'd like to tell you more about that as we go along tonight. I have given you all a piece of paper, a flyer on your table. It's got my website, Steve, the number four, Oxnard.com. Please look at that, and also look at my Facebook site, and you can hear the five-minute version of this introduction. Thank you. Terrific, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. Mr. Villa. Yes. Uh-oh, testing, testing, you're not working. We thought we'd tested them all, so. Good thing okay, we've got testing. Uh, there you go. Mr. Villa, take it away. Yes, my name is Jack Villa. I've been born and raised in Oxnard. I'm third generation. My family's been here for 100 years, since 1916. I am currently retired, 34 years at the U.S. Postal Service. I uh, have three sons and three grandchildren. Uh, and uh, my background is with uh, uh, neighborhood councils. Uh, I was former president of the American Postal Workers Union. Uh, I'm a member of the Interneighborhood uh, Council organization. Uh, and I look to be more uh, proactive with the neighborhoods. Uh, I believe the council is needs more engagement with the neighborhoods and the businesses. Uh, there's got to be transparency, and with transparency comes communication and, uh, and an engagement with the public and the businesses. Uh, I ran to, because I thought uh, I was able to work with the 
city manager, staff, the other council members, and work with the neighborhood and residents and uh, the, uh, the businesses. <clears throat> so I look to uh, be active. I am retired. I look to put 100% as a councilman. I don't have any side jobs, so I'm going to give you 100%. And I don't have any other commitment but to the city of Oxnard, and all my chips are in an Oxnard. Thank you, Mr. Bia. All right. With, with, I'm sorry, I can't read that part. That Mr. Chavez. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you to Casa Lopez, La Santa, the Downtown Improvement District for hosting this. Um, my name is Daniel Chavez, born and raised in the city of Oxnard. I am a proud Wyoming Viking, um, unless you went to Channel Islands, and then I'll be a proud Raider. Um, <laughs> the big thing, you know, my three core values in my campaign are trust, unity, and mutual respect. I believe our residents should have trust in their elected officials that, we're, that we are taking on every project and making every decision that benefits every single resident, regardless of the area that you live in in the city and benefits the employees as well. Unity throughout our entire city. We are seeing that certain areas of our city aren't being um, cared for, and other areas are starting to turn into those parts. So the big push is trying to unite our city. Um, and mutual respect, I believe once we get our trust and mutual respect in order that, uh, our trust and unity in order that mutual respect will reign, um, you know, I made the decision to run for city council because my wife and I, we had our daughter, and anybody that is a parent can agree that when you have kids, your vision on the world changes. So I want to improve the quality of life for our residents and employees. Thank you. Mr. Chavez, thank you very much. I know we've got a lot of pent up applause. Let's give it to them now. As I indicated when we began, there are five questions we want to go through this evening, mostly related to the downtown uh, district uh, and what we can do to improve the downtown. Uh, we're going to go exactly the same way we did before, start at the far end. Um, and we've got the question on the screen here, so all of you can refer to it as you need to, but I'll read it for everyone one time. The downtown Downtown Renewal was officially a 44-year, multi-million dollar project of the former redevelopment agency. What would be your top goal to revitalize downtown in a four-year term with the current budget? Let's start at the far end. Yes, sir. Yeah, what, what, I, what, I would, what I would do is uh, create private partner partnership with uh, industry and businesses and use the cities, the municipalities, our uh, tax um, uh, process to encourage uh, new companies and new industries to come uh, and relocate to the city of Oxnard. They're, they're, uh, by, by doing that, you're going to have companies that they might not be directly in the downtown area, but companies will will create activities that will benefit everybody, and especially in, down, in downtown. Uh, there has been a lot of um, uh, missed uh, opportunities by the current city council and mayor. They have not had the vision to look ahead and work together with other entities to, uh, to have more efficiency in our goals in downtown. Thank you. To help me and maybe the audience, do you have your card? We can put it up on the table there so we know who you are. There you go. And I'm sorry I didn't introduce you as I called your name this time. Enrique Petras. Okay, Mr. Petras, thank you very much, sir. Mr. Starr, we have one minute each. Back to Mr. Starr. 44 years. What better evidence does one need to show that Oxnard City Government has destroyed downtown Oxnard? We want to revitalize downtown empower small businesses, the true engines of job creation. How? One, implement permit simplicity. Permit simplicity creates a streamlined process for business expansion and eliminates costly delays that discourage businesses from locating or expanding here. 
It has been an effective economic development tool in other cities like Phoenix. Two, reduce Oxnard's excessive tax burden. The city has the highest tax rates in Ventura County. We can't compete for jobs by pricing ourselves out of the competition. Three, focus government resources on crime reduction. Businesses don't want to locate in an unsafe community. Downtown Oxford has so much potential. We need a new and better approach if we are to fully realize that potential. Thank you, Mr. Stark. Moving next to Ms. Flores Otto. So, hello, oh, hello. Sorry, I told a picture that's always on. Um, you know, when thinking of downtown renewal and, and how to revitalize the downtown area, I think the city of Oxnard took a great step in inviting the Congress for New Urbanism to come and, and put together their charrette. I definitely agree with one of the points presented in that charrette in that you need to have um, neighborhoods kind of built into, or housing built into downtown. I think currently I've seen some figures for downtown where there's 1,500 residents, but definitely if we can somehow work with developers to create these uh, like a neighborhood-centered downtown uh, area for the city of Oxnard. Uh, I think that would be the best part, or the best way to revitalize the area. I mean, you could bring it down, you bring all these businesses, uh, but what good is a neighborhood market like Trader Joe's without a neighborhood? Thank you. Thank you very much. Get over to Ike and Steve names again as well. Mr. Montreal, you're up. Okay, um, real quickly, I feel that we need to attract people, period, into the downtown. Uh, downtown, obviously not just the housing, but businesses need to come here and residents and people from outside of the city need to do business here in the downtown. That being the case, public safety is an issue. How walkable is our downtown? Is it very simple to walk from one end all the way to the other end? How safe do people feel walking down Oxnard Boulevard at night? We need to focus on public safety. Once that's taken care of, it'll attract more people to the downtown. Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. Mr. McDonald. Thank you. We need to get back to having a clean, safe, clean, safe attractive, prosperous downtown. And Mr. Madrigal's right. People need to want to come down here. About six or so years ago, under Mr. Sotelo's regime, uh, we started reducing the security contract. We started reducing the number of officers in the storefront. And I had long vocal conversations with them saying this is what's going to happen. And we're seeing the results of that now. There are more than just security or police officers. There are ambassadors to the community to make people feel good about being downtown. Uh, one example, I was sitting at Starbucks about a month ago, talking with a friend, and a person walked up and asked to use my cell phone. I politely declined, and they got a little belligerent with me. And I could tell from looking at them, that there was narcotics involved in this person. If that's happening to me, it's happening to everyone. It's quite simply, that is not acceptable. We re need to return to our basic roots. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Mr. Albanese. Thank you. Whether it's uh, 44 years, one year ago, five years ago, we're looking towards the future, not the past any longer, because that's kind of gone. My plan in the next four years is really simple. It's to work what we already have in place and help the businesses that are already here to grow, be prosperous, generate revenue, and give back to the same area and the same community. We can't do it without the businesses that are currently here, such as this one. So we really need to focus on what we have already here and start building structure to start driving in other business from the outside to really create that downtown that we all want to have. Thank you, Mr. Albanese. Mr. Doge. Thank you. The, there are three things that I would uh, focus on in, in a four-year term. Um, first is we, we have a plan in place that has been vetted by the public, that's been vetted by the local businesses, and now it's time to execute that plan. So the thing I would want to do is first, once again, touch base with all the local uh, businesses that are here, make sure that we have buy-in to the plan so there's no last minute adjustments. Once we have that, we need to work on the infrastructure. We need to re reroute all the traffic, uh, get the parking situation worked out, and finally, after that, we need to look at and make sure that we have the right mix of business and residents in the downtown area. So when we redevelop, we have a, a um, already implanted um, 
population or um, customers that live and commute within downtown. And finally, I'd like to make sure that our downtown highlights the history and the culture um, complexity of our spot. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. Mr. Hubert. Thank you. 44 years is a long time. Some things worked well and some things didn't. And these are my top priorities. The first thing we need to do, need to do is get our fiscal house in order. For businesses to come here, they know, need to know that we're on solid financial footing. The sex, second thing we need to do is make sure that our permitting process is second to none. We need to follow best practices. And we need to make sure that we are benchmarking other good organizations. Finally, we need to be servant leaders. We need to serve the community. How about downtown improvement district? What do you want? The city is your biggest impediment right now. Let's work together and find out what you want and form a partnership. And finally, we need to have a safe city. In order to come downtown, we want folks to be safe and feel safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huber. Moving now to uh, Mr. Villa. Uh, yes, uh, I was here 44 years ago, <laughs> and even longer. And uh, the first thing we have to do is safety, ensure safety in the downtown. Uh, there has to be communication with the businesses as far as the, the $6 million award uh, downtown. Uh, I personally think that, that that money should be used for short-term and long-term issues and uh, I believe the, the businesses should get uh, a voice in how that money is spent. Uh, besides safety, there's got to be a, a, a fiscal responsibility and so that the city is uh, financially stable and we have uh, plenty of reserves. Thank you, Mr. Villa. Don't lose your card there. Mr. Chavez? Yes, so, you know, the, I guess the main thing that we need to do is that we just need to get started. 44 years, multi-million dollars spent on this project, and from what I know is that it's a cumulative of multiple projects into what we have right now. So, what are we waiting for? We already have the project, the money's there for reserves. Let's get started. Let's create an, a day life for our families, so make the city of Oxnard downtown family friendly during the day. That means having enough um, police officers walking around, you know, whether it's the security that's part of the downtown um, district. Let's create a nightlife for our millennials. We have the largest young population in the county, but yet we're not capitalizing on that. So we need to work to get moving now. We don't need a 2030 plan. We don't need a longer plan. We need a now plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Well, how about it again, guys? Woo. Thank you. This is working very well. I really appreciate your patience so we can get through, and I appreciate your patience so we can get through uh, the, the whole panel. Let's start again with question number two. Give us your elevator pitch to attract new businesses downtown Oxnard. We'll start again with you, Mr. Petras. There, there are several uh, uh, things that I would do to attract new businesses. Number one, like I said before, use uh, municipal tax incentives to uh, entice businesses to come and come in, uh, relocate to the city. Secondly, uh, put the police department a notice that we want the crime rate to go down. Uh, and, and thirdly, uh, try to create a, a, um, a citizens committee to, to, uh, to discuss a way of creating uh, a vacation uh, destination uh, for Oxnard. We can get great ideas from local citizens who, who, have, who have traveled to other states and other countries to come back to Oxnard and tell us what makes a destination attractive to, to people and to businesses. Uh, the main thing is for uh, a, a mayor and a city council that have the will and the power to use whatever they have at their resources. I feel like the current city council and mayor have missed opportunities in the past, and that's the reason why we haven't been able
to move the city forward. Thank you, Mr. Petrus. Moving now to Mr. Stark. Back to you, sir. Oxnard is a vibrant and diverse community that's a great place for families and businesses to grow. Under our new leadership, we are truly poised to become the most business-friendly city in Ventura County. Our city is moving forward with innovative new economic reforms to reduce regulatory barriers and empower business growth. While other communities are imposing more regulations on business, Oxnard is cutting red tape and expediting permits. While other communities are raising fees, Oxnard is lowering the cost of doing business. While other city governments are erecting walls to stop business, we are building bridges to encourage it. Oxnard wants you to be a partner in our mutual success. We offer the location and the workforce to help your business prosper. I want to make this kind of pitch a reality so all Oxnard residents can benefit from a more prosperous community. Our city has all the resources necessary for success. We just need a new approach and new leadership at City Hall who can make, help make it happen. Mr. Starr, thank you, sir. Ms. Flores, up. As the largest city on the Central Coast, uh, the City of Oxnard has a potential buying power of upwards of 200,000 residents. For your business, I would propose you bring you come to downtown Oxnard, which is at the heart of our city, 10 minutes from the freeway, 101, the one, 10 minutes from the coastline. I would invite you to join the already eclectic businesses that are in downtown, that range from restaurants to nonprofits to uh, the art studios where you do Zumba. Okay, oh, got distracted. And would hope that you would find a home here in Oxnard among the rest of us. Thank you. Ms. Flores-Haro, thank you. And uh, Mr. Albanese. I'm sorry. <laughs> got my got my cards mixed up. Mr. Madrigal. Uh, simply put, we need your business here in downtown Oxnard. Um, we are looking to the future. As previously stated, this is the largest city, not only in the county, but probably Central Coast. Uh, there is many attractions. There are a lot of young adults here in the area. We have two universities, three universities in the county to attract young adults into our downtown. Uh, to a business, also tell them, look at, the, look at the success of the collection as something that the downtown can be as we can, as the city of Oxnard to bring people into the downtown. Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. To you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. This is a, a pitch that I give whenever I have the opportunity to attract new businesses to downtown. And it's quite simple. I understand the systems here. I understand the processes here. And I tell the businesses, I want you to come here and be successful because when you're successful, you make my community successful. I will do everything in my power to assist you through our processes by knowing who to call and how to get in touch with people and get answers for you in a very timely fashion. It's very important that you come here and work with us. Uh, we have a vibrant downtown merchants association. We have a vibrant uh, downtown business improvement district. This is the place to be in downtown Oxnard and I will do everything in my power to make you successful. Thank you, sir. Moving to Mr. Albanese. So first of all, I'm not going to start with my elevator pitch because I think that we first need to help the local businesses become successful and show a proven example in order to really do what we're talking about up here. But the reality is that we can do a lot of things to, to attract businesses. And my elevator uh, uh, speech would be something a little bit like this. We have a great transit system, a streamlined permitting process that will help you get in business and open those doors as quickly as possible. And our city is culturally rich and available to help you produce revenue and be a profitable part of the city. Thank you, Mr. Albany. Mr. Dozier. My pitch would be um, we are the largest city, the fastest growing city on the Central Coast. We have a vibrant north side that's pulling in traffic from the freeway, um, getting people to shop and pulling people into the city. The south side is going to eventually be a destination on the site. It's going to be, once we get our beaches in the water, it's a place that, that people will plan to vacation. That leaves the, the center downtown as your um, things to do, sightseeing, and it's the prime real estate to invest in if you want to get in at the ground level um, of, of Oxnard's revitalization. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. 
Mr. Huber, sir. Great, thank you. So during my tenure as your city council member, this is what I would say. Oxnard is a safe city, we're a clean city, we're well run, and we're friendly to business. We have incentives for you because we have the best processes. We've gotten rid of all the red tape for permitting and all the conditioning. In fact, we have set up a business development office that is second to none. It's world class. So we're going to meet with you and make sure that we meet all of your objectives and all of the things that you need. We're going to say, come for a visit and stay forever. Please call me. I'm here for you anytime you want. Thank you. Mr. Huber, thank you, sir. Mr. Villa. Uh, yes, my pitch would be uh, the safest downtown, uh, also a streamline of the permit system, a, uh, a multicultural uh, city with clean beaches uh, to attract uh, customers and, and visitors. I, I believe Oxnard has the, has the possibility to be one of the best cities in California, and uh, I think we should get to work on it. Thank you, Mr. Villa. Now, Mr. Chavez. How about those Dodgers, huh? <laughs> so, I guess, you know, the main thing that we can do is we're, we're developing, we're growing, and any business that comes to the city of Oxnard is going to succeed. How do we succeed? Well, like it's already been said, we have over 220,000 residents in the city of Oxnard. We are the largest in Ventura County. We have the largest young population. So any business that comes to the city of Oxnard and to downtown is gonna succeed. We're so close to the beach. We have multiple beaches that we can choose from. And like it was already said, we have freeway access, it's there. So we're gonna create a unique downtown and we're gonna want new businesses to work with our current businesses to create a unique environment for every person that visits the city of Oxnard. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. And I know the applause always comes after you. It's not just for you, for the entire panel. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. Thank you. All right, our third interrogatory for the panel. What do you think are the major challenges impeding downtown development? And what strategies would you propose to stimulate private investment? And let's start again with you, Mr. Petras. <clears throat> yeah, the number one impediment that I see is that the current city council and the mayor for years, going back maybe 10 years, they have missed the opportunity to decrease the crime rate in the city of Oxnard. It is not true what some people tell you, that this is the safest city in, in California or one of the safest cities in Ventura County. It's not true. The crime rate has increased, crime rate hasn't come down, and one of the main reasons is because the city council and the mayor haven't had the vision to put it before the city manager and tell the city manager, this is the vision that I want for the city of Oxnard. I want you and I want the police department to reduce the crime rate. If that's not gonna happen, we're gonna, re we're gonna cut your police budget by one third, and if that doesn't happen, we're gonna fire the police chief. The next thing that we need to do is to try to tell and make it very clear to the city manager that his job is on the line, that the vision of the city, that, that, the, city man, that the city council and the mayor have proposed, it better be enacted, it better be, it better be put into effect, because if that doesn't work, we need to make changes in city government. Thank you, Mr. Pedro. And now to you again, Mr. Stark. <clears throat> to attract significant private investment for economic development, Oxnard must end the culture of bureaucracy that pervades City Hall. Oxnard's taxes are too high, our city government is anti-business, our street maintenance is mediocre, our crime rates are unacceptable. All of these problems serve to discourage business development. We need a fundamental change of leadership to achieve lasting economic prosperity for Oxnard. First, we need to streamline the city's business permit system to make it more efficient and less costly. Then we need to lower our city tax rates so they are more competitive with other communities. Next, we need to empower our small businesses by removing city imposed regulatory barriers. And finally, we need to expedite the repair and improvement of our city streets and infrastructure. Creating a more responsive and customer-friendly city government is the only realistic strategy for attracting future business investment and job growth in downtown. 
Thank you, Mr. Starr. And now Ms. Flores Otto. I would say the, one of the bigger challenges facing, um, or that's impending on downtown development, is how downtown is currently zoned as uh, suburban oriented, more or less. Uh, we're thinking back to my first response of, you know, how would we revitalize downtown? I definitely do believe in uh, creating a neighborhood in downtown with um, housing and housing units. Um, I would, you know, build consensus within the council to achieve that, to direct the city manager to explore, you know, urban design standards that would make it easier for developers to achieve this. Um, I think one of the other things that we can look at is Oxnard Boulevard, now that we have control back of Oxnard Boulevard. It is the street that runs from the highway to the beach. It is, like, in my opinion, it, it is a major artery of the city in, in, in moving folks and getting people to the downtown area, so I'd also have uh, us as a city look at what ways that we can improve this, this major artery in our city um, to, uh, in, in, in improving transportation, we also um, uh, help out our businesses as well in getting that kind of um, track in there. Thank you, Ms. Madrigal. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, Ms. Flores. Oh, no. Now I can you. call on um, Mr. Madrigal. Okay, um, as I previously stated, uh, safety is a huge concern uh, for residents coming into the downtown. Uh, but instead of beating that down one more time, I'll focus on something else. Another thing is that what do we do to attract people here to the downtown? Why would someone not living near the area come into the downtown? What happened to our arts? Why would you bring, decide to bring your family here into the downtown on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon? What is here in the downtown to attract them to come down? Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. Mr. McDonald. Thank you. I, I think it was Walt Kelly in the comic strip Polga that made the quote, we've met the enemy and the enemy is us. Uh, and, and unfortunately, that's true. We tell people we want you to come downtown but you need a business license. Oh, you want to do improvements on the building to make it attractive to your customers. Oh, you need building permits. So let's take a look at that system and say for the first year, the business license is free. We'll give it to you. If you do tenant improvements, we just don't charge you everything that, that we are charging you now. We want to encourage you to come downtown. We want to encourage you to be successful. And we're driving you back out of downtown by charge dollars. And people may say that's a gift of public funds. It's not public funds if the people aren't here and they aren't going to come here if we charge them to death. So let's get them here, let's make them successful, and then go from there. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Now, Mr. Albanese. As a longtime business owner in the city of Oxnard and also a business owner in the downtown Oxnard area and a property owner in downtown Oxnard, I really feel I understand from what I've experienced in the past are the real issues that impede many businesses from coming to the downtown area and actually being successful. And I don't need to call anybody out or anything like that, but this business we're sitting here today took years to get off the floor and to actually open its doors and operate the way it is today. If it would have been anybody else, this business would have not continued and it would have not been striving as it is today. So I really feel that cutting a lot of the red tape the fees, the cost, are not the biggest issue. A business license is not that expensive. Many things are not that expensive. It's really streamlining things and making it much more friendlier to have businesses come to the city, operate, and be profitable. Thank you, Mr. Albanese. And now, Mr. Dozier. Thank you. A lot of things have already been said that I agree, and uh, one being, I think, the biggest um, hurdle that we have to overcome is ourselves. I mean, we could talk this into the ground. It's been 44 years in the making, and I'm sure it didn't sit on a shelf for 44 years. So at some point in time, we, we got to pull the trigger and start working. And once we start um, the, the, the process, then I would like to see us um, present some, ex some business expos to get businesses to come in and take a look. And when we get new businesses to come in and take a look, let's partner those businesses with local business, with our Chamber of Commerce, and have those that are here show them what to, how to walk through the process of setting up shop in Oxnard. And finally, we definitely need to streamline the red table. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. And now, Mr. Huber, sir. Thank you. I talked to a lot of businesses in the downtown, and. 
But one common theme was that we have an image problem. Our reputation is that it's unsafe to go downtown. It's not well lit, it's dirty. It's sketchy, is what they said. So we need to take care of that first. Also, if you go downtown, you can watch a movie, and then what? We need some other things to do downtown. What about children's activities? I keep saying we've given up on children's. So the Gulls Wing's not there anymore. I was at the Gulls Wing's closing, and the day I was there, somebody from Los Angeles came all the way up for the Gulls Wing's. Other things we need to take care of is our planning process. We have code conflict in downtown. You go to a dinner and a movie, it's going to take you two hours. You can't park, though, for more than two hours in downtown. Also, along the Boulevard and Saviors, the Center for New Urbanism and the Oxnard Community Planning Group recommends that we look at the downtown zoning and rewrite it. And finally, we need to look at some business incubators and bring those new entrepreneurs downtown and let them stay downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huber. And now, Mr. Villa, please. Yes, uh, first of all, we need the to secure the safety of, of the businesses and the patrons of those uh, businesses. Uh, it has to be clean. It has to be uh, the uh, permit system. It has to be streamlined so it's easy to have a business. Uh, we've got to attract uh, businesses uh, like the theater. Uh, down in Southside at one time, they had a skating rink. They had a bowling alley, they had a theater, and now that's not there. That same, those same businesses could be downtown uh, to attract the youth and young adults, which don't have anywhere to go for entertainment. Uh, we have a park, but it closes at night. We have a, a library, but that closes in the evening too with limited hours. Uh, but. We need to have ideas uh, to uh, bring youth here and uh, create more businesses. Thank you, Mr. Villa. And now, Mr. Chavez, sir. Are you sure the clapping wasn't for me, right? Uh, well, well, we'll see. We'll okay. see. <laughs> so, I guess the main thing, you know, being born and raised in the city of Oxnard and growing up, Oxnard has always had a very bad reputation. Not just downtown Oxnard, but the entire city. If anybody lived at Thousand Oaks, Simeon Valley, and they ask you, where do you live? And I proudly say Oxnard, they go, oh. <laughs> you know, it, it starts with changing the reputation that we have in the city. And I believe council members, elected officials, businesses, community leaders, and organizations need to all come together in a partnership to change that reputation. You know, it was said that the licensing's not that expensive while our businesses are paying two to three times more than the average in the county. The process for licensing and permit takes seven months or more. So we need to truly reevaluate where we stand at a city and create a better relationship with our current and future businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Let's show Mr. Chavez how much we appreciate the entire panel. We've got our, our fourth question here, and we're going to change it up just a little bit. We're going to start with Mr. Chavez and go the other direction and see what happens. All right, question number four. Homelessness is a major quality of life and public safety issue in our community. Please share your philosophy on the issue and ideas to end homelessness. Mr. Chavez, sir. So you took my applause away. No, no. So, Homelessness is just not an issue only in the city of Oxnard. This is a chronic problem that's growing across our nation. Unfortunately, many are only one paycheck away from ending up on the streets. You know, a few weeks ago, I addressed the Commission on Homelessness with a four-point project plan that I had in order to address our homeless issues, to address on assisting our veterans and that is creating transitional housing in our city. From transitional housing, they'll be able to get the services that they need medically and psychologically, um, be able to apply for government assistance when needed, and move them into permanent housing. You know, these are not a new thing that came up. This is just a challenge that always seems to be reoccurring. 
and that is because of conservative views on council. We need progressive views. We need thinking outside the box in order to tackle this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. And now you, sir, Mr. Pia. Uh, yes. Almost every city in the country has a problem with homelessness. And uh, like uh, Mr. Chavez has said, we need housing for them. We need medical, uh, counseling, employment. Uh, we need uh, actually a combination of, of the different federal agencies to come together and private agencies to come together uh, to helping the homeless. Uh, right now, they have a system, a HMI, S system attracts the the, uh, the county homeless. I don't understand why those aren't linked with other counties in the state and the state creating a uh, one system where we could track all the homeless in the state instead of uh, within the counties. Thank you, Mr. Villa. And now you, Mr. Huber, sir. Can I have his time? Because I could talk for hours on this one. <laughs> Thank you. We need to show compassion and not ignore our homeless population. There's a, there's a number of strategies that we can use. I'd like to address three of them. For the homeless that are, are mentally ill, you know, the Oxnard uh, website says they, we do no homeless um, support, but we contract out to nonprofits like Turning Point or the county's behavioral health or human services. We need to continue to do that. But it's city council that needs to go to the state and county to get more resources for the mentally ill homeless. We also need to take a look at the substance abuse homeless. There's lots of programs for them that are successful today. And for those that are down and out, if you dial 211, there's a ton of resources that they can utilize to stop the cycle of homelessness. Finally, we need to assess all those programs and our innovative city staff can come up with an action plan on how we can end homelessness. Together, we all can work together to end the homelessness in Oxnard. So let's do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huber. And now, Mr. Dozier, sir. Thank you. Um, last week I was at, a, or a little over a week ago, at an a, a event, and I was talking with a resident and we kind of talked about the homeless problem here in Oxnard. And uh, she reached in her pocket and she pulled this card out and she said, the next time, um, instead of giving someone some money, give them this card. And this card is to the Ventura County uh, Rescue Mission. And she said, you know, they're, they're, that just highlighted that there are a lot of organizations within our community that are willing to help the homeless. And it's just a matter of connecting those, them with those organizations. We also can't fight it by ourselves. It's a countywide, a statewide problem. If, if we don't attack it as a state, then um, the, the problem is just going to shift from city to city. So it's really something that we need to focus on. Uh, the organizations that are here willing to help and make those connections. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. And now Mr. Albanese. So I think there's several issues here that are mixed up with the homelessness that we talk about so often. Uh, first of all, it's having compassion for all homeless, but I think we do need to attack it very differently depending on the situation because there are people that are mentally ill, there are people that are addicted, and then we have homeless. Because as you know, a lot of us have had in the past that have grown up in these areas that have had family members, friends, acquaintances, or people we know involved in drugs or with mental illnesses, it's not always a fact that they don't have where to go. It's that they have an issue that they need to deal with. So I think there really is, it needs to be a separation and we need to deal with them differently and individually at the same time. So in, by uniting public safety, the mental health, and social services and having them deal with the different issues differently, I think we can really accomplish a great stride with homelessness. Thank you, Mr. Albanese. And now, Councilman McDonald. I think for the longest time we've been approaching homelessness with the Band-Aid approach. And every winter we create a warming shelter and we give people a place to stay and at the end of that period, we stop doing it. It's time to get over that Band-Aid approach and, and develop a system, a place, a location where the people that are situa situationally homeless, and, and I classify them in two different groups. Some people just want to be homeless. They make that choice. Other people are there because of their life situation. Let's take the people that want help, that need help, find them a place to go, 
where they can get the services they need, one-stop shop under one roof, where they can get the psychological counseling, the medical counseling, whatever counseling they need, uh, financial management assistance, whatever, and get them back into the mainstream of, of being part of our community and stop doing the Band-Aid approach. Thank you, Councilman. Now, Mr. Montrico. Uh We need to come together as a community to uh, help solve this problem of homelessness. It is going to take a lot of people, it's going to take a lot of time, but we do need to uh, be compassionate and we need to take a smart approach as to what plan we're going to do and how it's going to help everyone involved in the process. Thank you, Mr. Madrigal. And now Ms. Flores. Otto. Thank you. You know, when I think of my philosophy on homelessness, I often think of no one wakes up and says, today, you know, I want to be homeless. There's definitely things that lead into that circumstance that people find themselves in. I think, you know, Housing vouchers, obviously, are like one of the first ways to you know, get folks off the street. But when you have, um, you know, federal agencies like Section 8, that there's a wait list. What else is it is out there for them? Uh, Council Member McDonald uh, mentioned the um, the shelters that are open during the winter. But I feel the city would do well to, um, as was mentioned, contract with a nonprofit, maybe Community Action of Ventura County, which um, Mr. Francis, you are on the board of. I know. Um, and maybe work with them to have that case management system that Community Action does offer because I feel like that is a missing piece. Yes, you can house them, but if you don't have that management um, of that person and, and helping get, them get the services that they need, um, where do they end up? It's, it's a cycle that, that happens. Thank you, Ms. Flores Otto. And Mr. Stark, to you, sir. This is really tough. We have to recognize that the vast majority of people who live on the streets suffer from mental illness or drug addiction. Nonprofit organizations are much better suited than local government to administer mental health programs and treat drug addiction. Perhaps the best that City Hall can do is support active code enforcement to curtail aggressive panhandling and to stop outdoor camping by homeless individuals. Homeless encampments are a health and safety problem for our entire community. And Oxford should work with nonprofit partners to find housing solutions that do not create negative impacts for our neighborhoods. I'd like to make an observation though. Have you noticed that the homeless do not congregate at the collection? Perhaps it's because that entire property is privately owned and a vagrant can be removed as a trespasser. In contrast, Plaza Park and the surrounding streets are publicly owned. In the long haul, solving the ill effects of homeless population on downtown Oxnard may require that we give pop downtown merchants ownership and control of their streets and alleys. Thank you, Mr. Starr. And now, Mr. Petras. Uh, yes, the, uh, the homeless uh, problem or issue is not a local or regional issue. It's a, it is, this is a federal issue that has to be addressed by members of Congress and, 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 and senators. While the city of Oxnard and other, other uh, municipalities in Ventura County and the whole state ought to be working hard with their local representatives in Congress and the U.S. Senate to try to convince the federal government that this is a federal issue and that they they and the state government should be more, more ready to assess financially the, the localities. One of the, one of the issues that I think, one of the, one of the factors that I think they would uh, reduce uh, homelessness is to allow the city of Oxnard to have granny flats. Granny flats is basically additions to your, to your uh, R1 residential homes. By doing that, you're gonna create a lot of uh, livable space so that those people, we're gonna have a lot of winners. You're gonna have the homeowners earning income and creating uh, a, a dynamic economic power in the city. Secondly, you're gonna have people who are gonna be using uh, legally built places to live. So I, I, I would support Granny Flats. Thank you, Mr. Point. Petrus. You know, unlike some other debates we've seen recently, we don't see a lot of sighing, a lot of sniffling, a lot of talking over other people. Let's give them all up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. The fifth question. And they've been keeping to their time. It's, it's really incredible. The arts, sorry, the arts are a proven economic catalyst for downtowns nationwide. What policies and strategies would you leverage to support development of a vibrant cultural arts district? And we'll go back to our original 
program and start with Mr. Petras. I, what I would do is I have several, several ideas. Everything, that, everything that's, that the city does carries a price tag. Everything is expensive in delivering services to our citizens. The way to increase revenue in the city, I, I have three, three ideas. One is to, like I said before, cut the police budget. We have given public safety so many millions of dollars and we haven't got a big bang for our dollars. The emergency response time for the city, for the city fire department is not very good. The crime rate keeps going up. We ought to cut the budget of the public safety for once to one third of, of the current budget. Secondly, we ought to do a hiring freeze in the whole city of Oxnard to save some money and just hire the people that are critically needed. Third, we need to we need to um, we need to have those. That's how you're going to get. Uh, and the other way is to cut every department in the city, cut it by 10 percent in their budget. You gotta do more with less. That's how you're gonna get revenue to do a lot of things that we need to do in downtown. Thank you, Mr. Petras. Mr. Stark? I don't believe for one moment that people are not shopping downtown because we lack artwork. The last institution you want in charge of the arts is government. Witness the money losing performing arts center. If you want more art downtown, we can start off by not charging $1,175.57 for each art proposal review. And it's ridiculous that the city charges a 20 cent per square foot public art fee on new development. That's an extra five grand for a 25,000 square foot building. If you want more art, stop constraining businesses who want to paint wall murals on their own buildings. Recently, the pizza shop on the corner of C Street and 5th, they decided to paint a mural on this building. The city made them paint over it. If you want a vibrant arts culture, focus on making our community more prosperous. A rising economic tide will lift all boats, including the arts. As a council member, I will focus on strengthening Oxnard's economy and attracting new businesses in our city. Thank you, Mr. Starr. Ms. Flores Hoffman. I would say a strategy for increasing our art in the downtown areas is looking to examples like in the city of Ventura where they have you know, an art walk. I know something similar happened here in downtown Oxnard with an art walk. Um, unfortunately, I as a resident didn't know about it. So the city could definitely do um, a little bit more outreach in to let them know what, to let the residents know what type of events are out there. Um, so definitely thinking, you know, an art walk, um, or a art slash wine walk would definitely bring in the foot traffic, bring in revenue if you have it quarterly. Um, I would even recommend moving the Thursday farmer's market tonight and inviting local artisans um, to, to, um, to that new uh, farmer's market space. I mean, we see that there's a want for cultural events. Look at how successful the jazz festival was. We just need to work with our community to ensure that these events happen, and they happen in the downtown of Oxnard where they're accessible to all. Thank you, Ms. Flores Otto, and now Mr. Madrigal. Art is vital to our culture and to our city. Um, as far as getting art to, into the downtown, a perfect opportunity is when we have our food trucks. There could be a place for local artists to show off their art. We get a lot of people in every first Thursday of the month for the food trucks, there's people from Oxnard, there's people from the outside of the city who come to have some food and they can see some art. Also, we could work with our local schools. It could be something with a kindergarten class. It could be the junior high students. It could be high school students. We also have our local universities, our community college, Oxnard College. We could get young artists to come out and enjoy and to show off their beautiful talent. Mr. Madrigal, thank you, sir. Mr. McDonald. I think there's a couple things we can do. One, I'd like to see us consider purchasing the Social Security building. Even though it's a redevelopment asset, we have to have to get rid of it under redevelopment. It doesn't say that the city can't purchase that property back and keep it as part of a, a building that we could use as an incubator for uh, arts and different types of arts. And when I talk about art, I'm talking not only about the art media paintings and that, which is very important. You see a lot of that in the different business, but also the musical arts. We have a rich culture and a lot of families here in the city of Oxnard that are very active in the music industry. 
uh, the Estrada brothers, the Herrera family. That's the other type of art I'd like to see us keep and bring downtown to attract people to come down and, and do little impromptu concerts or what have you uh, so they can come down and listen to the music or come down and, and see the art media and enjoy downtown and then have a good time and, and improve in everything. Mr. McDonald, thank you, sir. Mr. Albanese? Thank you. I think we really need to look at the demographics of the city of Oxnard to really see what types of arts are really attractive to the city. I'm definitely not for privatizing everything in the city. Uh, there are some things that might benefit from being privatized, but let's look at some of the things that we're running right now and are not successful or not creating revenue for the city and let's look and see maybe it might have been the right leadership wasn't in place. The right people to, to make them profitable, to make them build revenue for the city were not in place. And I really feel you need to have local uh, people that understand the demographics, understand the culture and understand the residents to really understand what is going to drive revenue and help business be successful and profitable at the end of the day because that's really what's going to revitalize the downtown area. Thank you, Mr. Albanese. And now, Mr. Dozier, sir. Thank you. I'm sure most of us have been out at the collection and you've seen the big mosaic wall. Um, that wall was created by Frank Bauer. Frank Bauer is a local artist. He's also a resident of uh, River Park neighbor. And uh, what, what Frank um, represents is a workable program that Shea Properties ran at the collection to bring in unique art. I, I think that the city should um, duplicate that, that process with other local artists and uh, highlight some of our local art. Also, I, I believe that the Social Security music, um, uh, building should be turned into the Kids Museum. I mean, we, we had people coming from all over the state to go to that museum. We got space, let's use it. Uh, and finally, we have a, a vibrant film um, production at our community college. Let's have some film festivals uh, downtown, or, or at least promote them better, and also music festivals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. Mr. Huber. Thank you. Oxnard is one of the best kept secrets in town. Art uh -huh. is one of the best kept secrets in Oxnard. When you look at 151 or 141 West 5th Street, the Oxnard Cultural and Heritage Building, it's incredible art on the second floor. The Gulls Wings Museum mural. Even American Cleaners has a portrait inside. And look at the restaurants that we have around town. They have art. We have wonderful art. But what we need to do is we need to expand our art galleries and get people walking downtown to look at that art. We need to stimulate startup studios so that folks can display their art and people will come to them. We also need to start looking at, yeah, we missed the art walk trend. Ventura took it. We can do that. We can do concerts in the park. Coronado, California, every Sunday afternoon during the summer has incredible numbers of people to just picnic and have fun in the park and listen to music. We need to embrace our, uh, we need to embrace our diversity and we need to become an international art center for not just the county, but California. Thank you. Mr. Huber, thank you, sir. And Mr. Villa? Yes, with our diversity in this, in this city, uh, we have a, a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, a lot of singers, actors, and uh, we need venues for these uh, individuals. The youth do not have a, a place to practice their art or their, uh, uh, their music, uh, bringing it to downtown and uh, experiencing the, the talent in this city uh, would bring businesses to, to the, uh, or business to the, to the downtown. Uh, I think uh, Oxnard has a lot of talent and we should use it. And with it, all its diversity and culture, it would be even better. Thank you, Mr. Villa and Mr. Chavez. Thank you. Um, you know, I drive for LA Metro in LA County, and you know, that's some traffic I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. But the main thing that I see throughout all the cities in LA County is that they have art. And you know, we have the summer concerts, we have other programs in our city, but Unfortunately, we don't showcase our own talent of the city. I know we have bands, I know we have artists, so we need to start showcasing them. 
you know, a big thing is that um, we have the talent, we just need to start um, publicizing it a little bit more. I, I agree with a lot of the comments that were made up here as far as, you know, capitalizing on it because everyone else is passing us up. In schools, as a person that works seven years in a school district, art and music are slowly leaving our public schools. So we, as a city, need to start pretty much filling the gap to allow our students to be able to have art in their life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Well, we got through all five questions. How about one more big round of applause? We'll switch it up one more time. Each one of the candidates has a one minute closing statement. And we'll start here with Mr. Chavez. I wanted the grand finale applause. <laughs> so, you know, I think we all, it, it's hard to try to get your point across in a minute because there's so much information and you want to just really blur it out. But if we do that, then we're going to sound like we're at an auction and, you know, then no one understands that. But I'm a resident that was born and raised here. My ultimate goal is to improve the quality of life for every single person that lives here or does business here. We're a city that has promise, but we need to have the right leaders in there to take us to that next level. And I believe for our current situation, we don't have that. We need progressive leaders. We need leaders that represent us as a community. The city of Oxnard has a great history of being hard-working families, and we need to start appreciating that and capitalizing on that. And I don't know what number I'm on the ballot, but I look forward to your support on November 8th. And you can visit my website at danielchavezjr.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. And Mr. Villa, sir. Yes, bo born and raised in Oxnard. And uh, I believe I'm going to... Hold the mic up, Mr. Villa. There you go. And I believe I'm going to probably see my last days in Oxnard. All my chips are in on Oxnard. Uh, I've dedicated 38 years. Of, of helping the community, the neighborhood, the workplace. There's not been one time where I haven't been active in one capacity or another. And I've developed a sense of leadership and a direction. And I believe the direction for Oxnard must change. Uh, that's why you see so many candidates, because they probably think there needs to be a change. And uh, I hope for your vote and support. Uh, and uh, that's, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Villa. And now over to you, Mr. Huber. Thank you. So I bring experience, skills, and ability to return common sense leadership, fiscal and financial responsibility, and trust in government back to Oxnard. Together, we can make Oxnard a great city again. I have the leadership skills to do that. I can balance budgets, we can do that. And I'm a small business owner, and I know exactly what issues some of the businesses in downtown Oxnard have to go through, and I wanna make sure that they never have to go through those in the future. So, I'll just leave you with this. I have no personal agenda. This is not about me. My agenda is what's best for Oxnard. I know that this job is a great job and it's better and bigger than all of us and we need to take it seriously. I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves. So together we can do that. I'd like to thank the Downtown Improvement District for this forum. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out. So I know personally that every vote counts and I know personally that you need to get to know all of your candidates. So please do that and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Huber, and Mr. Dozier, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all, the, all those that organized this. Thank you for coming out. My name is Orlando Dozier. I'm a candidate for Oxnard City Council, number four on the ballot. For the past 10 plus years since I came to California, I have been actively involved in this community and trying to make it better. From working from PTA meetings, to um, my homeowners association, to my neighborhood um, um, community uh, commission, to uh, I was the um, 
chair for the Community Relations Commission. I'm on a current, uh, <clears throat> um, wow, <laughs> I get nervous. But anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I have nonstop since I've been here uh, done my best to make this a better community. And I'm asking for your support this November to help me get to that next level and to make the city even better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dozier. And now to you, Mr. Albanese. Thank you. David Albanese brings knowledge, education, and experience. A wide variety of experience. And I'm going to give one, I'm going to leave you guys with one thing from the doghouse to the White House. And that's the reality. I know many of you here have seen me grow in the city and have seen me flourish with business, has seen me fall in business and get back on my feet and keep moving forward. City of Oxnard really needs leadership that really knows the city of Oxnard and understands its local businesses. On November 8th, I'm counting on everybody's vote here, David Albanese, for your next city council member that really knows the city. Thank you, Mr. Albanese and Mr. McDonald. Thanks, sir. Thank you to all of you who came out tonight. I know there are other things you can be doing. I appreciate that you spent time with us listening to our viewpoints. On the table to my left, I've left some of my information. Uh, I'd love you to look at it. My campaign has three points of focus. One, public safety. Oxnard spends less per capita on public safety than almost every other city in Ventura County. We need a strong, vibrant public safety community. Number two, economic gardening, something Mr. Albanese talked about quite a bit. Finding the successful businesses that are already here, helping them flourish and move into the future, and as they grow, they will cause other growth uh, in this industry and in our city. And finally, bringing back trust in City Hall. We need to have our house in order before we ask our residents for increases in fees, um, utilities, or anything else. We need to make sure that we're spending their money wisely. I would appreciate your vote. Thank you again very much for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. And now, Mr. Matrico. Uh, I'm gonna focus on one Oxnard. We are the city of Oxnard. We need to come together as residents of the city of Oxnard and improve our city. Uh, change is hard. Uh, believe me, it is very difficult. As we can see, uh, we've been working hard to try to improve the downtown. There are still issues, but together we can uh, make a difference. Also, another thing that I did not touch on on my opening was I want to focus on the future of the city. We need to have a partnership with our local schools. Schools, the local high schools have academies. There's business academies, there's teaching academies, health and science, so on and so forth. We, or actually the downtown needs to get together one of these high schools and have an academy so the students feel that their voice is being heard and we can get people here into the downtown. Uh, lastly, I humbly ask for your support on November 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Metrical. And now, Ms. Florizato. So, thank you everyone who, who's come out tonight. As, as I look around the room, you know, I, I see folks who, you know, I used to go to church with. I see folks that, you know, I went to um, elementary school with their children. This is my community. This is my home. And I commit to making it the best place possible for both businesses and families alike to thrive. I bring a unique perspective, experience, and passion to, the, to my candidacy and would do so in, as a, your next city council member. Thank you, and I look forward to your vote on November 8th. Ms. Flores Haro, thank you very much. Mr. Starcer. Ask yourself this question. Which candidate has demonstrated real leadership in turning talk into action? The city council thought they could intimidate me with a lawsuit. I fought back and qualified Measure M for the ballot in 16 days. I am absolutely committed to making Oxnard an attractive place to live and conduct business. If the City Council fails to address City Hall's fundamental problems, I am prepared to move ahead with other ballot initiatives to reform city government. As the financial controller for Haas Automation, one of Oxnard's most successful companies, I understand what it takes to create jobs and manage budgets. Oxnard is falling behind its neighbors, and we just can't afford business as usual at City Hall any longer. Oxnard is a dynamic community, but our city government is tired and stale. 
It's time for innovative new leadership at City Hall. Let me be your champion. Help us to make the change we need by voting for Aaron Starr for City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starr, sir. And Mr. Petrus, bring us uh, yeah. home. Uh, I, have had, I have had hundreds of people come up to me and tell me that they have that they know they have a lot, there's a lot of corruption still in City Hall, in the mayor's office, and in the city council chambers. That's what they tell me, that there's a lot of corruption. And many of them have even went as far as to say that they're planning on going to the Ventura County District Attorney's Office to file a complaint. So don't be surprised in the future if you see the FBI raiding the city hall again. You know, there is still a lot, of, I agree with those people, there's still a lot of corruption and mismanagement of public funding. I have several ideas on how to fight that. Number one, we should have term limits for, for, for the mayor, no more than six, year, six years, and for the city council members, same thing. I support term limits. Secondly, I would like to have special districts, council members being elected by special districts in the city of Oxnard. That's one of the major re ways that the, that the south of Oxnard is going to be and enjoy economic vitality, health, and social status. Thank you, Mr. Petrus. As a downtown business owner, I want to personally thank each one of these uh, candidates for coming out and speaking tonight. You are all very lucky to have such a qualified group of people. Let's give them a big hand. I thank our moderator, too. He did a great job.